Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and all the dreamers and achievers listening in, I'm here to talk to you about something incredibly precious, time. You see, time is the most valuable asset we have in this life. It's the great equalizer. It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, or what your circumstances are. We all have the same 24 hours in a day. And yet, so many people let those hours slip away, day after day, year after year, without realizing the immense potential they hold. Today, I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to stop wasting your time, to stop squandering the precious moments of your life. You see, the biggest enemy of your success is not some external factor, not the economy, not your upbringing. It's the way you manage your time and the choices you make with it. Time wasted is never regained. Once it's gone, it's gone forever. Now, I understand a life can be tough. Challenges come our way, setbacks happen, and sometimes it feels like the universe is conspiring against us. But here's the truth. You cannot control everything that happens to you, but you can control how you respond to it. You can control how you use your time. You can decide not to waste another precious year of your life. Imagine this. A year from now, you could be standing in a completely different place in your life. You could be healthier, wealthier, happier, and more fulfilled. You could have achieved things you never thought possible. But for that to happen, you need to make a choice. A choice to stop procrastinating, a choice to stop making excuses, and a choice to start taking action right now. Success is not a matter of luck. It's a matter of choice and discipline. It's about setting clear goals and working relentlessly towards them. It's about investing your time in activities that bring you closer to your dreams, rather than wasting it on things that won't matter a year from now. It's about being consistent, persistent, and resilient in the face of challenges. I want you to think about your dreams, your goals, and your aspirations. What do you want to achieve in the next year? What kind of person do you want to become? What legacy do you want to leave behind? Now, I want you to understand that you have the power within you to turn those dreams into reality. You have the potential to achieve greatness, but it requires you to take responsibility for your time and your choices. Don't let fear hold you back. Don't let self-doubt paralyze you. Don't let the opinions of others define your worth. You're capable of achieving extraordinary things, but you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in your abilities and your potential. And most importantly, you have to take action. Start by setting clear, specific goals for yourself. Write them down and break them into smaller, manageable tasks. Create a plan of action and commit to following through with it every single day. Stay focused, stay determined, and don't let anything or anyone distract you from your path. Surround yourself with positive, like-minded individuals who support your dreams and aspirations. Seek guidance from mentors and learn from those who have walked the path of success before you. Remember, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with, so choose your companions wisely. Embrace failure as a learning opportunity. Understand that setbacks are not the end of the road. They are merely stepping stones on your journey to success. Every failure teaches you valuable lessons, and every obstacle you overcome makes you stronger and more resilient. Take care of your health and well-being. Exercise regularly, eat nutritious food, and get enough sleep. A healthy body and mind are essential for peak performance. Take time to relax and recharge, but don't confuse rest with complacency. Use your leisure time wisely and make sure it aligns with your goals and values. In the pursuit of your dreams, be patient but persistent. Success rarely happens overnight. It requires time, effort, and dedication. Stay committed to your goals, and don't be discouraged by the challenges you face. Remember, the darkest hour has only 60 minutes. Keep moving forward, keep pushing yourself, and you will eventually break through the barriers that stand in your way. Finally, don't forget to express gratitude for the blessings in your life. Gratitude is a powerful force that attracts more positive experiences into your life. Be thankful for the opportunities you have the people who love and support you, and the experiences that shape you into the person you are becoming. So, my dear friends, I urge you, don't waste another year of your life. Seize the moment, take control of your time, and pursue your dreams with passion and determination. The journey won't be easy, but it will be worth it. When you look back a year from now, you'll be amazed at how far you've come and how much you've achieved.
Ladies and gentlemen, imagine a life where you wake up every morning with a sense of purpose, with a fire burning inside you that propels you forward toward your dreams. Imagine a life where you don't just go through the motions, but you seize every moment with intention and determination. That, my friends, is the life of someone who knows how to make the most of their time and achieve their goals. Today, I want to talk to you about one of the most valuable resources we have, time. Time is the great equalizer. We all have the same 24 hours in a day, yet some people seem to accomplish so much more than others. Why is that? It's because they understand the importance of managing their time wisely and focusing on what truly matters. First and foremost, if you want to achieve your goals and make the most of your time, you need to have a clear vision of what you want to accomplish. You need to set goals that inspire you, goals that ignite a passion within you and drive you to take action every single day. Without a clear vision and specific goals, you'll find yourself wandering aimlessly through life, wasting precious time on things that don't matter. Once you have your goals in place, the next step is to prioritize your time effectively. You need to learn how to say no to distractions and time wasters, and say yes to the things that will bring you closer to your goals. This means setting boundaries, learning to delegate tasks, and ruthlessly eliminating anything that doesn't align with your vision. One of the biggest time wasters in today's world is technology. Don't get me wrong, technology can be a powerful tool when used correctly, but it can also be a massive distraction if you're not careful. How many times have you sat down to work on something important, only to find yourself mindlessly scrolling through social media or watching cat videos on YouTube? We've all been there. If you want to make the most of your time, you need to learn to harness the power of technology without letting it control you. Another key to not wasting time and achieving your goals is to develop good habits. Success is not the result of one big action, but rather the culmination of small, consistent actions taken every day. If you want to achieve your goals, you need to cultivate habits that support your vision and propel you forward. This might mean waking up an hour earlier to work on your side hustle, committing to a daily exercise routine, or dedicating 30 minutes every evening to reading personal development. Whatever it is, make it a habit and watch as your progress accelerates. But perhaps the most important ingredient in the recipe for success is perseverance. The road to achieving your goals will not be easy. There will be setbacks and obstacles along the way. There will be days when you feel like throwing in the towel and giving up. But it's during those moments of adversity that your true character is revealed. It's during those moments that you must dig deep, find your inner strength, and keep pushing forward no matter what. Remember, Rome wasn't built in a day, and neither will your dreams be achieved overnight. But if you're willing to put in the work, if you're willing to stay focused and disciplined, if you're willing to persevere in the face of adversity, then there is nothing you cannot accomplish. So don't waste another moment. Don't let fear or doubt hold you back. Seize the day, take control of your destiny, and make the most of every precious moment you've been given. Your dreams are within reach, but it's up to you to make them a reality. Which leads me to the secret that has changed millions of lives, personal development. Many people go through life stagnant, never really improving or growing. But to live a truly fulfilled life, one must always work on developing themselves. Why is personal development so critical? For several reasons. Firstly, it is part of human nature to grow. As living creatures, it is ingrained in our very DNA to learn, improve, and evolve. Sitting still goes against our most basic instincts. Humans are built to expand our horizons, take on new challenges, and become better versions of ourselves. To deny this is to deny an integral part of the human experience. Secondly, personal growth keeps us engaged and energized. When we actively work to improve ourselves, whether it's learning new skills, taking up hobbies, or pushing beyond our comfort zones, we feel alive and excited. Challenging ourselves gives each day a sense of meaning and purpose. Without growth, our lives become stagnant and dull. We lose our zest for living. Working on yourself keeps you vibrant. Additionally, personal development is essential for success, no matter how you define it. Those who are static and complacent inevitably get left behind. Growth is what allows people to accomplish their goals, advance their careers, and realize their potential. You simply cannot succeed without persevering to improve. It is the key that unlocks doors to new opportunities.
And finally, developing yourself makes you a better person, not just for yourself, but for those around you. When you better yourself, you have more to offer the world. Your friends, family, colleagues, and community all benefit from the best version of you. We owe it not just to ourselves, but to others, to continually grow. Now, personal development manifests in many ways. It can be concrete skills like learning new software or languages. It can be cultivating habits like consistent exercise or reading. It can be gaining knowledge by taking courses or reading books. It can be immersing yourself in new cultures through travel. There are infinite ways we can enrich ourselves. But while the paths we take may differ, the destination remains the same. A better, more fulfilled version of ourselves. We must see self-improvement not as an option, but as a lifelong obligation. The instant we stop pushing forward is the instant we start sliding backwards. I urge you to see personal growth as a journey without end. Some may question why they should spend time and energy developing themselves. But I ask you this. If you do not invest in yourself, who will? If you do not push yourself, who will? If you do not believe in your own growth, who will? You alone are responsible for your progress and fulfillment. No one can do the work for you. Make a commitment right now to pursue your own continuous improvement. Start that new hobby. Pick up that instrument you've always wanted to play. Learn a new language. Read more books. Set ambitious goals. Feed your mind, strengthen your body, and enrich your spirit. This is how you stoke the fire inside and unleash your untapped potential. Let me leave you with this. Life rewards action. You will only get out what you put in. With each new effort, with each new challenge, you build yourself into the person you want to become. You move yourself closer to the successes you crave. But it starts with you. You must make the conscious decision to better yourself each and every day. When you commit yourself to non-stop personal development, your future will be unbounded. Your growth is never complete. Your improvement never ends. Embrace this mindset, and you embrace a life of unlimited possibilities. Seize this day and every day to make investments in yourself that will yield returns you cannot imagine. I believe in you. Now, go show the world the incredible, ever-evolving person you are meant to be. Enemies of the mind you've got to battle with in the summertime. One is pessimism, which tries to get you only to see the negative side. Of course, there's a negative side. Life is part negative, what else is new? If the glass is half empty, it is half empty. You say, well, I've been taught to see that it's half full. Well, sure, it's half full, but it's also half empty. I mean, can't you handle that? I mean, you know, that's not too difficult. But here's what pessimism would try to get you to do. Believe that it's only half empty. And when pessimism comes to your mind, you've got to educate pessimism because pessimism is stupid. Pessimism tries to get you to believe that it's only half empty. You've got to say to pessimism, you've never been to school, too dumb and stupid to know. Of course, it's half empty, but it's not only half empty, it's also half full. I'm asking you to be in charge. Be in charge of your own mind. Be in charge of your own destiny. You battle with your enemy in the summertime. In the summertime, you've got to learn to love like a mother, hate like a father, give life like a mother, nourish, take life like a father. Father says to whatever threatens his family, take two or three more steps toward this family and threaten them, you'll cease to exist. And the father, I kill. Do battle with your enemies. Now, it's also possible to love like a father and hate like a mother. I'm not saying that's impossible. Nothing more dangerous than an angry mother. I saw an article in a magazine a little bit ago up in Canada. It showed a man with some claw marks on his back had his shirt off, big teeth marks in his neck. This man was out in the woods, had his flash camera, saw mama bear with a little cub, thought, oh, this is cute, took a flash picture. Mama bear takes unkindly to this flash picture, probably chases the man, catches him, almost kills him before somebody rescued him. So, beware mama bear. Okay, love like a father, hate like a mother, give life like a mother, Take life like a father, or however you want to arrange it. Just so you nourish your values, nourish your family, nourish what's valuable for you, nourish your organization, nourish your distributors, nourish your customers, take care of your responsibilities, feed, nourish. 
But then, I'm also asking you to do battle with your enemies. Take sword to your enemies. Whatever is going to destroy those values, take sword to it. If it's worry, take sword to it. If it's fret, fret and back. You got to be like your bloodstream. Good illustration. Red corpuscles to nourish like a mother. White corpuscles to fight and kill like a father. You got to do some negative thinking. Can't just think positive. Thank God for white corpuscles that think negative all day. White corpuscles say, just show me some infection, I'll kill it. Whatever threatens this body in its future gets threatened. Whatever's got to kill this body gets killed. I'm asking you to take sword to your enemies, whether they're on the outside or whether they're on the inside. Protect your family, protect your future, protect your values. Love, nourish, but also do battle with whatever is out there to do battle with you. Take some courage from those that have been through the battle. They've given you their stories on this stage. They've been through it. They know what it's all about. Take some courage from that, and in the summer, do battle and nourish. Now, here's the last one. In the harvest time, number four, take your harvest and all that comes your way with full responsibility. Don't complain. That fourth season, complaining, I'm telling you, could ruin all of your chances. Complaining sometimes starts as an infection. If you don't take care of it, it becomes a disease. Do battle with it. In the harvest time, reap your harvest without complaint. It's your crop. You sowed it. You either made the calls or didn't make the calls. You wrote the letters or you didn't write the letters. You were steady or you weren't steady. You did it or you didn't do it. You put together a good day or you didn't put together a good day. Take responsibility when the harvest time finally comes and say, Hey, it's my crop got to take responsibility for it. I do not complain. And then, here's the next, do not apologize if you've done well. We offer no apologies when these winners that walked across this stage here go back to their communities. We offer no apology for making the kind of money they make because of the lives they touched and the people that they helped. No telling what would have happened if these people had not touched many people's lives, who touched many people's lives. When you go back to the community, all of you that were winners here, I ask you to go back with no apology because you've done your job well, and you've given good hands to everybody you've touched. You deserve all the money. Mr. Shaw put it to me this way. Jim, if you had enough reasons, you could do the most incredible things. I never forgot how he put that. If you have enough reasons, see, reasons will change your whole life. Mr. Shaw said to me, Mr. John, I think you've got plenty of intelligence. You've got plenty of talent. You've got plenty of ability. Probably what you lack is plenty of reasons. He said, I don't think your current bank balance is a true indication of your level of intelligence. I was happy to hear that. He said, I think you're much smarter than your present bank balance indicates. And that turned out to be true. I was much smarter. But, of course, my first question was, well then, why isn't it bigger? And he said, you don't have enough reasons. You got enough intelligence, but not enough reasons. So, see, reasons can change your life. Here's what else I found out. Reasons come first, answers come second. You don't get the answers to do well until you get the reasons. Life has a mysterious way of hanging on to all the answers and only gives them up to the people that are inspired by reasons. So, reasons make the difference in how your life works out. Now, what are some of the reasons for doing well? Let's go through a quick list called reasons for doing well. First is personal reasons. Some people do well for recognition, some for respect, some for the way it makes them feel. They love the feeling of being a winner. Those are good reasons. I have some millionaire friends that keep working 10, 12 hours a day, making more millions, and it's not because they need the money, it's because they need the joy, the satisfaction, and the pleasure that comes from being a constant winner. And see, it's not just the money anyway, it's the journey, not the money. Once in a while, somebody says to me, boy, if I had a million dollars, I'd never work another day in my life. That's probably why the good Lord sees to they don't get their million, right? They quit. Okay, next is family reasons. Some people do extremely well for other people, and that's powerful. Human beings can greatly affect each other. Sometimes, we will do things for somebody else that we will not do for ourselves. We are made that way. I met a man one time who said, Mr. John, to do all the things I want to do with my family around the world, he said, 
I've got to have at least a quarter of a million dollars a year. I thought, incredible, could a guy's family affect him that much? And the answer is, of course, how fortunate are the people that find themselves greatly affected by somebody for personal achievement. And we are affected. The writer of a recent song said, if not for you, the winter would hold no spring. Couldn't hear a robin sing. I just wouldn't have a clue if not for you. So, we can be affected. That might be one of the most stimulating reasons to do well, finding somebody. When Andrew Carnegie died, the wee little Scotsman that built the big steel industry, when he died, they opened up his desk, and in one of the desk drawers, they found a slip of paper. On that piece of paper, Mr. Carnegie had written his goal for his life, and he wrote it when he was in his twenties. And on that piece of paper, it said, I'm going to spend the first half of my life accumulating money. I'm going to spend the last half of my life giving it all away. What a goal. He got so inspired by that goal that the first half of his life, he accumulated $450 million, and the last half of his life, he gave it all away. Good question tonight. What's got you turned on? What's got you bummed out of sight to get up early and stay up late and hit it all day? Next question. What's got you turned off? When I found the answers to those two questions, my life exploded into change. I finally found out what had me turned off, and I got that cured, and then I got me a long enough list of reasons to turn me on, and once the lights went on for me at age 25, they've never gone out. I've fallen out of the sky a few times, but I've never lost that drive to make something unique out of my life. See, reasons altered my whole life. Now, there's another list of reasons called nitty-gritty, hard little reasons. Sometimes those little reasons are the most powerful reasons that can change your life. Sometimes it doesn't take much. I now carry several hundred in my money clip. It's only a few hundred, but it was one of those reasons that turned my life around. Just before I met Mr. Shaw, I heard a knock at the door. I go to the door, and there's a little girl standing there, about this tall, selling Girl Scout cookies. And she gave me one of the finest sales presentations I've ever heard, special deal, several flavors, this whole package of stuff, two dollars. And with a big smile, she very politely asked me to buy, and I wanted to, big problem, I'm broke, I don't have two dollars. And to this day, I can remember the pain and the embarrassment. I'm a father, I'm a husband, I've been to college, I'm working, I'm 25, I don't have two dollars. And I didn't want to tell her that, for some reason. So, I did what I thought was next best. I lied, too. I said, hey, look, I've already bought lots of Girl Scout cookies. I still got plenty stacked in the house, which was not true, but it seemed to get me off the hook for the moment. He said, well, gosh, that's wonderful. Thank you very much, and she went away. When she left, I closed the door, and that was the day I said to myself, I don't want to live like this anymore. I've had it with lying, and I've had it with being broke. I'm never going to let this happen to me ever again. I promised that day I would work as hard as possible and would always carry plenty. It took me a little while, but now I do. It was one of those reasons. And I guess I carry plenty for two reasons. One is the way it makes me feel, but also in case I bump into another Girl Scout selling cookies, right? I'm ready. Let me give you a good philosophical phrase. All values must be won by contest, and after they've been won, they must be defended. You say, wow, you put a pretty heavy task on us. That's what life is all about, a pretty heavy challenge. We don't give large trophies for small effort. If you want to win, win high health. If you want to win high wealth. If you want to extend your reach in touching people's lives, you've got to engage in some of these extra powerful disciplines. One is to secure the territory by vigor, and the other is to defend it with equal challenge. Life was designed not to give us what we want, not to give us what we need, but life was designed to give us what we deserve. Every value in life must be paid for, and those that pay are the ones that get it. It says, those that give, receive. Someone says, I wish to receive, I wish to receive. You don't have to concentrate on receiving, just become a good giver. It says, those that search will find. Someone says, well, I need to find some good ideas to help change my life for the future. Then, to find good ideas, that doesn't come because you need them. It comes because you search for it. If you want good ideas, you've got to go after them. You've got to go to the class. 
You've got to go to the workshop. You've got to go to the training. Go to the book, right? You've got to go to the journal, right? Go where good ideas are being taught. Go search, searching. Go looking because good ideas are not going to be wasted on those that are not seeking, searching, well prepared. Get going, that's the key. Some people are ever learning, but they don't put it into action. They don't really take the action. It's like the man who keeps bringing materials to the building site and never builds anything. He keeps bringing in the sand and the gravel and the windows and the doors and the roofing material. And he just stacks up all these supplies, but he never builds anything. See, if you do that long enough, fairly soon, they'll come and take you away. You've got to do something with what you've learned. You've got to take action. You've got to get going. So, that's one of the most important things. To learn how to design your days. How to design your weeks. How to design the months so that you take the proper action to get the proper return that you're looking for, whether it's economic or personal. Get going. It's a major key. When you change, when you get better, it'll get better. If you change, it'll all change. Don't put it on someone else. Hope that someone else will change it for you. Take responsibility for yourself. Take personal responsibility. You can't change the circumstances or the seasons or the wind, but you can change your reading habits. You can change whether or not you go for the skills. Burn the midnight oil. Turn yourself around. Multiply your value by 2, 3, 5, 10. That you've got charge of, that you have control of. If you want your life to change, here's the source of it all. Ideas plus inspiration. The good news is, ideas are not that far away. I've got an excellent phrase for you to consider, one that will serve you well for the rest of your life. Everything you need is within reach. The ideas you need for life change or business change are within listening reach. They're within reading reach. In fact, there's probably a library not too far from you. The problem is, most people pass by libraries, very few walk in. Andrew Carnegie set up all these libraries across the country thinking everybody would stop in. But no, almost everybody drives right on by. Do you know how many people own a library card in the United States? 3%. And guess how much they cost? Nothing. The ideas are within reach. But here's the key question. Who is going to reach? There's a simple biblical phrase that says, if you seek, you will find. But it's very important to know that finding is reserved for the seeker. We don't find what we need. We find what we search for. If you will search, if you'll try, if you'll go, if you'll listen, ideas are within reach, and ideas are life-changing. There's nothing so powerful as an idea whose time has come. A business idea, a social idea, an investment idea, a good health idea. All you need is a specific idea to make an impact on your life. Ideas can help you gather treasure, gather equity, and gather wealth. Ten years from now, you can be right where you are now, or you can be in a new place. The difference between now and then could be significant in terms of money, lifestyle, treasure, and equity. In 10 years, you can enjoy an incredible life if, right here and now, you make a small change in your thinking to start you on the journey. The key is to start right now, gathering the ideas and making the changes that will take you further along this new road. Ideas can change your life, and sometimes, all you need is just one more good idea in a series of good ideas. It's like dialing the numbers of a combination lock. After you've dialed five or six numbers, the lock may not come open, but you probably don't need five or six more numbers. Maybe you need just one more number, one more idea. Maybe a seminar or a sermon could provide it. The lyrics from a song could do it. The dialogue from a movie could do it. Conversation with a friend might do it. If you keep your eyes and ears open, you'll find that one last idea you need. Once you find that idea, the lock comes open, and there's the door for you to walk through. Just one more idea, no matter where you get it, may be all you need to open that door of opportunity. If, however, the lock still doesn't open, you may be lacking inspiration. Who knows why some people are inspired and some are not. Some people find a great idea and turn it down. Some people say that it costs too much. Some people say that it's going to take too much time. Some people are too busy. There are a lot of different reasons why some people are inspired to take advantage of a good idea while others pass it up. I call it mysteries of the mind, and I just leave it at that. There are some things I don't try to figure out. Some people buy, and some don't. Some go for it, and some don't. 
some change, and some don't. And if you've been around for a while, you can usually spot those who don't take advantage of a good idea. A man asked me, how come all this stuff goes wrong for me? I say, I don't know. The most I've been able to figure out is that those kinds of things always happen to people like you. I'll bet he's one of the ones who don't take advantage of good ideas. If he continues on that path, he'll probably never find the right combination. That honor will always fall on the ones who do, like you, the consistent, disciplined, purposeful, constant search for knowledge. It's where the life-changing ideas are. Pursue knowledge with high expectations. Spend the money, time, and effort. They're all investments, but the payoff is so great it's hard to compare the cost to the reward. First is the money. Set up an educational fund for the programs, the books, the lectures, the seminars, and the videos you need for a constant flow of ideas and inspiration. Take a portion of your income each month and set it aside to invest in the search for knowledge. Remember, the best money spent is the money spent to cultivate the genius of your own mind and spirit. Make sure you don't spend more for frivolous comforts and conveniences than you do for education. The money is a small price. The promise is unlimited potential. The next investment is time, which is an extremely valuable expenditure. It's one thing to ask someone for their money, but to ask them for their time is a much more significant request. Knowledge takes time, precious time. The time you spend is irreplaceable. You can get more money, but you can't get more time. However, life has a unique way of rewarding high investment with high return. The major investment of time you're making now could be that small fine-tuning you need for major accomplishment. Last is the investment of effort. There is a great deal of difference between casual learning and serious learning. Learning that opens up the whole mental and spiritual process is truly an investment in effort, and this effort is the investment that opens the floodgates of ideas that can work their magic for you in the marketplace. So, don't hesitate to ask you to spend in a deliberate and consistent fashion the money, time, and effort required to reach your goals. These are the investments that turn on the lights, sharpen the focus, and start turning your wishes of wealth and happiness into reality. The second way to learn is from other people's experiences. Remember, you can learn from other people, whether they have done things right or wrong. You can learn from the negative as well as the positive. The Bible is such a great book because it is a collection of human stories representing both sides of the ledger. Some human stories are called examples, do what these people did. Other human stories are called warnings, don't do what these people did. What a wealth of information, knowing what to do and what not to do. If your story ever gets in somebody's book, make sure they use it as an example, not a warning. There are three ways to learn from other people. The first is to listen to the programs and read the books by and about people who have accomplished great things. All the successful people around the world I know and work with are good readers. They are driven to read because they just have to know. It's one of the things they all have in common. Here's an excellent phrase. All leaders are readers. Successful people also listen to audio programs, especially while they're in the car or during other times when they can't read. Programs can help all of us easily pick up new ideas and skills. Did you know there are programs and books on how to be stronger, more decisive, a better speaker, a more effective leader, have a better effect on other people, become more loving, develop a more winning personality, get rich, develop persuasive influence, become sophisticated? And people don't want to utilize these resources. How would you explain that? Did you know that hundreds of successful people have written their stories in books and told the world how they became successful? And most people don't want to read or listen to them. How would you explain that? They're busy, I guess. They say, if you work where I work, you'd know that by the time I struggle home, it's late, I've got to have a bite to eat, watch a little TV, and go to bed. I can't stay up half the night and read. Imagine someone who is behind on his bills. He's a good worker and very sincere. Unfortunately, you can be sincere and work hard all your life and wind up broke, confused, and embarrassed. You've got to be better than a good worker. You've got to be a good reader and a good listener. You don't have to read or listen to educational programs half the night, although if you're broke, it's a good place to start. All you need are just 30 minutes a day, that's all. Stretch it to an hour if you can.
but set aside at least 30 minutes to hear or read something challenging, something instructional, at least 30 minutes a day, every day. Miss a meal, but not your 30 minutes. You can get along without some meals, but you can't get along without some ideas, examples, and inspiration. There's a biblical phrase that says, man cannot live on bread alone. The most important thing, aside from bread, is words. Words nourish the mind. Words nourish the soul. Humans have to have food and words to be healthy and prosperous. Make sure you have a good diet of words every day. And remember that to properly feed the mind, you must maintain good balance. Don't just read or listen to the easy material. You can't live on mental candy. With good books and programs, you can tap into the treasure of ideas. And if somebody has a good excuse for not tapping into the treasure of ideas for at least 30 minutes every day, I'd like to hear it. You wouldn't believe some excuses I've heard. Don't make the same mistake. Invest the money, get the programs and books. The best money you can spend is money invested in your self-education. Don't shortchange yourself when it comes to investing in your own better future.